In this video we're going to create some assembly drawings of the coffee table that we've produced in the previous tutorials. So let's get that open. It's in my most recent... Double click on it to open it. And let's just remind ourselves of what we did. So we had a part studio where we drew the three main components, the leg, the tabletop and the shelf. We had a part studio where we created the fasteners, the stud for the leg, the screws and the bracket. We then created a sub-assembly where we had the leg, the stud, the two screws and the support bracket, the L bracket. And then we did the full assembly where we had the tabletop, the shelf and four of our sub-assemblies. So what we're going to create are two drawings of this assembly. The first we're going to create is an orthographic drawing and the second one we're going to create is an exploded isometric drawing. So to create a drawing we're going to click on the plus sign and we're going to select create drawing and that gives us a few options. Now the best way I found to do this is to click on custom template because that gives us the most choice over what we're going to do. Now there's two standards that we can follow. There's ANSI, which is American National Standards Institute, and there's ISO, which is International Standards Organization. And we're gonna go for ISO. Um, that's because over here we use uh, A4 paper, A3 paper, not American sized paper. Our language is gonna stick with English, but we're gonna change the size to A3, which gives us a nice size page layout uh, to print out if we were working on this in school to, to manufacture our table. We're going to keep the default units to millimetres. We're going to use the period as the decimal separator. Some European companies use a comma. And we're going to choose third angle projection. Uh, I'll explain that later on. Um, not many places now stick with the old first angle, although it says International Standards Organisation. Most countries now will draw in third angle. The right hand side we're just going to keep it as it is and we're not going to worry about any standard views we're going to incorporate what we want so click on ok and that will then load a blank a3 piece of paper with a border and a title block so we can then choose what we're going to bring in now we want to bring in an assembly so we can see that it's defaulted to the part studios we're going to click on the assemblies and we want the full assembly and that will then give us a, a preview box of one of the views. Um, and this is actually looking at the table uh, from the side. It's actually the, the front orientation um, or the longer side of the table, which is the front view, which is what we want. Now, the scale is 1 to 10, uh, which means that for every 10 millimetres that our table would be in real life, we're going to draw it 1 millimetre long. Now, that's going to be a bit small on this page, so we can change the scale and see what it's going to look like. So... Let's try one to five to start with. Um, now that's quite big, um, and I don't think we'd fit our other views on there, so we want somewhere in between. So let's go for one to eight. So that's not a bad size. So let's place that over here on the left. So we just click to place that. Now you see up here, the projected view tool is selected straight away, which means that we can move the cursor up and we'll get a view of the table as if we were looking down. So with third angle, the view above is what we would see if we were looking from above onto the view below or the table top. Um, we could do the same, so we could select this view again. We've still got projected view on there. We could select that again, um, and that would allow us to do this. And so underneath, um, we can see what the view would be like. Um, and so here you can see the sort of the details of the, the legs being slightly inset, and we can see that the shelf uh, only fits between the legs it doesn't stretch out over to the full width of the tabletop um, and again let's click on that table and this time do a projected view over to the right hand side so we can see what the table would look like looking from the right hand edge now it's a good idea with an assembly like this uh, in an orthographic projection to put some overall dimensions on so let's add those we're going to use the dimension tool which is this one here we're going to select the long length of the tabletop and we'll select the short edge of the tabletop and then the other only dimension we really need to put on here uh, would be to do the height so we can select the height 
I'll just use the scroll wheel on the mouse to zoom in then. Uh, if we wanted to, we could add in other dimensions. So we could show the width of one of the legs. Although normally we would show that in the part drawing, uh, but we might want to show the distance between the legs. And we might want to show the height up to the shelf. Now let's use a, a different view to do that so we don't get confused. Um, so we can click on the bottom of the leg and the top of the shelf and that will give us the height of that. So that might help for positioning if we were assembling it. And quite simply, that is our orthographic drawing done. The next thing we're going to do is to do an exploded isometric drawing. Now to do that, we need to go back to our full assembly first of all. And in our full assembly, what we need to do is to explode this. We need to pull the parts as if the parts away from each other as if they were in an explosion and they were sort of moving away. Um, so to do that, we're going to click on this little tool here, which is exploded views, and we're going to add an exploded view. Now, this is quite simple to do, but it's important that you follow the steps through carefully. Um, otherwise, you can end up selecting multiple parts when you don't mean to. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select the tabletop. Once I select the tabletop, you can see I've got these manipulators, and all I want to do is to drag the table upwards. So I'm just going to pull it up so I've got enough space. Now, I might need to pull it up a reasonable amount because I'm going to pull some other pieces up as well. So let's pull that up sort of towards the top of the screen. Once I'm happy... I need to click on the tick. I'm now going to pull up the next part and this time I'm going to select the shelf and again I'm just going to pull that straight up. Keep going, keep going until it's almost up there with the tabletop. Just a small gap. Click the tick to say I'm happy. Now I'm just going to zoom in slightly and I'm going to pick the four studs. So if I just click on each one this means that as I pull up, all of them will pull up together. And again, I'm just going to do that until we're just below the surface of the shelf. I'm going to click the tick to say I am happy. And now I'm going to do the same with the four uh, L-shaped brackets. So I'm just going to spin that around so I can select the two that are hidden. I'm going to right click. Um, OK, I'm going to select over here and pick isometric to go back to the isometric view. I'm just going to zoom in with the scroll wheel and again zoom in with the scroll wheel and then move those brackets up as well. So there we go, position those there so they don't overlap and just tick the box. Now you'll notice that we've left the screws behind so we ought to include those screws as well. Uh, but in this instance, let's just do it for one set of screws. So I'm going to select that screw and bring it upwards. And I'm just going to leave it below the hole so it, it shows that it goes up through the hole. And then this screw, I'm going to firstly pull it up until it's roughly lined up with the hole. I don't need to be too precise. And I'm going to click the tick. And now with it still selected, I'm now going to pull it this way so it shows that it goes through the hole in that direction and click the tick. I'm now going to right click and go zoom to fit and that's my exploded assembly. So I could do the same with those other screws if I wanted to but I don't need to. As long as they're out here and I can select them in the drawing that will be fine. So I'm going to left click on done to say that I'm completed my exploded assembly and you'll see that it puts it back together which is what we would expect. So don't panic over that. It's remembered it. You can see all the steps over here and we can uh, go back to a bigger workspace by clicking on that tool and closing down the exploded assembly. OK, so let's create um, another drawing. But before we do that, let's to save confusion, let's rename the one we did just now. So I'm going to right click on that and I'm going to select rename and I'm going to call that orthographic assembly drawing. I'm now going to create the new drawing so let's click on the plus sign and go create drawing and we'll follow the same steps as before so custom template ISO English A3 period 
third angle, although for an isometric projection it won't really matter, and then click OK. That will load in. Uh, we've now got drawing one, so let's rename this from the start. So right click on it, left click on rename, and we'll call this exploded isometric drawing and hit enter. Again, we're going to click on assemblies and again, we're going to click on the full assembly and we've got our dialog box up here. And again, you can see it's defaulting to an orthographic drawing. So where it says view orientation, we're going to click on the arrow and we're going to pick isometric. And where it says explode position default, we're going to left click on that and we're going to select explode one. And um, there we have a kind of a, a, a border of where all the parts are going to be. We probably um, don't want to make that any bigger, so a scale of 1 to 10 is perfectly adequate for that. So let's left click there. It might look a little bit fuzzy until the drawing updates and then the, the lines will look a bit neater. So that's our positioning of all the components. What we normally do now is we would normally do two things. We would normally balloon the item, so we'd give each of the items a number in a circle um, with a line pointing to the item called a balloon, and we'd have a bill of materials. So we'd have a table on here that referenced each of those balloon numbers and says what each part is. So let's bring in the bill of materials to start with. So to do that, we've got a bomb table up here. So I'm going to left click on there. I'm just going to go with the default options here, and I'm going to drag this over and I'm just going to click in the corner out of the way. Now you'll see that some of this is a bit scrunched up, so I'm just going to select that uh, tab over on the left-hand side and just drag that out until I've got nothing that's scrunched up. So there we go. So this tells us the items, although we've not clicked on any of the items yet. This tells us how many of each item we need. And then we've got room for a part number and a description. Now I'll show you how to fill in the part number and the description in a moment. First of all, we're going to uh, tie in a set of balloons with the item numbers. So we're going to use the balloon tool. So up here is what looks a bit um, like uh, a magnifying glass, I suppose, with a number one in it. This is the balloon tool or the call out tool. They're called balloons because they look like they're helium balloons um, tied on with a piece of string. So I'm going to select the tabletop and click over there and nothing happens. Why is that? Well I need to select an edge. So if I select on the edge and then move over there, you can see it puts the number in and that ties in with one of the numbers. So let's do that for the other parts. So let's select the edge of the shelf, which is part six. Let's select an edge of a stud, which is part five. Select the edge of a leg, which is part two. And then we can come over here and we can zoom in a little and we can select the edge of the bracket and give that a number and we can then select the edge of the screw and zoom out and give that a number. Now arguably um, we can reposition these as we see fit. Let's, write, let's uh, just tick that to say that we're happy. Then we can right click and zoom to fit and we've got our drawing. Um, now we can click on that and delete it and click on that and delete it. So it's important to make sure that you select the edge of the part that you want to balloon. Now we can also uh, move things around if we want to so we can drag that around so that perhaps um, that looks a bit more evenly spaced out and it's not scrunched up in the middle of the drawing. So you can see part one we've got one of, one tabletop, part two uh, which is our leg, we've got four. Part three, which is our um, bracket, we've got four of, we've got eight screws, and um, so on and so forth. Eight, uh, four studs and uh, one shelf. But we've got nothing in here. How do we get things in there? Well, we need to, to do that, we need to go back to our original models. So let's go back to our components first of all. So we go to the Parts Studio with the components, and here we've got our components here. So we've got Tabletop. So I'm going to right-click on Tabletop, and I'm going to left-click on Properties. And I can put a description in here, 
Uh, so let's put in MDF table top. And I can put a part number in there. So let's go uh, flat pack furniture coffee table 01. And normally with part numbers, we don't have spaces. So let's put a dash in there. Okay. And then we can apply that. close and then we can do the same for our table leg so right click go to properties description well this could be aluminium tube part number flat pack furniture coffee table 2. We can apply that and close and let's do the shelf as well. So let's go properties, description, MDF shelf, part number, flat pack furniture, coffee table 3 apply and close and we could then go through to our fasteners and do the same but if we go to our exploded isometric drawing nothing's happened at the moment but can you see over here this is now um, highlighted in orange if we click on there it should then update this table and you can see that we've got the part numbers in there and we've got the description. So if we then go ahead and do the same for our fasteners, those will add in. So let's just go back and do that really, really quickly. So if we go to our fasteners and uh, screw, properties, description, uh, self tapping screw eight millimeters long, Part number, flat pack furniture, and uh, let's go F for fastener, 01, apply, close that, do the same for the stud, right click, left click on properties, description, M6, double ended, stud part number flat pack furniture fastener 02 apply and close and then the L bracket uh, so right click left click on properties description cast aluminium L bracket part number flat pack furniture fastener 03 apply close go back to our orthographic assembly uh, go back to our isometric exploded assembly click on the update and the information's gone into the table and that's that